clinical trials are not for the faint of heart. Uh, you got to want to be part of them. Yeah, um, you've got to do your due diligence. Um, and, and that goes for all of them that I've been part of. Uh, I found out about this clinical trial, I mean, shortly, the, maybe the same month that I started Spinraza. And I, and I knew this medicine was coming. That would have been in February of, I believe, 2017. Um, and I continued working and letting the people at Columbia University know, hey, I'm a good candidate for this. I'm on the upper end of the age scale, which is a downside, because obviously the, the, the drug company wants to get the drug approved for all ages. And the more senior people they have, uh, the more, or I should say, the less positive impact this drug is going to have. And so being on the top side, I knew that uh, you know, that was gonna be a downside for me, but I didn't give up. And I got the verbal and written approval that I would be part of the clinical trial, not until October of 2017. So it took uh, eight months of due diligence just to get my name on the list. And then once October hit, for a variety of reasons, I couldn't get in to have my first dose until February of 2018. So it took me a year just to get my first dose. Um, but, you know, throughout it, you know, I, I continued to let these people know uh, who were making the decisions. I'm a good candidate. I will start the program, and more importantly, I'll finish the program. I'll take the medicine every day. I'll show up every four months. I'll do what it takes to, to, to be part of this clinical trial, because that's, that's to me, is, is my best ally. Um, uh, and knowing which, you know, obviously knowing that, you know, a little bit about the clinical trial. So that's kind of the long story, just this particular clinical trial. It took me one year until I got my first dose. And I've been taking it ever since uh, about late February of 2018. It's about a year and a half. There are two things primarily, in addition to overall well-being. First is um, I have more um, endurance in the gym. Instead of doing 12 reps on a particular machine, I can do 20. Uh, I can do reps until I get too tired, meaning that I fatigue the muscle, I don't break it down. So I, I have to watch that. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm a little more diligent in my workouts, making sure that I don't do too much. So I, I do, I have more energy during my workouts. And the other part of it is I do recover quicker after a workout. I generally like to work out in the evening because when I'm done, I'm tired. And it's not a tired like you're tired. I mean, it's a tired. It, it, it does affect you all the way. But I recover quicker. Uh, an hour or two after I'm done, I, I feel like doing something again. Uh, be it, uh, you know, a little bit of computer work, taking the dog for a walk, whatever, whatever, is, uh, whatever I normally would do without a workout, I feel like doing that now. So it's more endurance and it's a much better uh, recovery time, a much quicker recovery time. And, and I think you know, there aren't a lot of things. I wish I could say, well, I could do this and I couldn't do it before. You know, like I could raise 10 pounds and I couldn't do, 10, I could only do eight before. I really can't get to that point yet. Um, but it is a noticeable difference every day. And the ARISD works for me better than the Spinraza because Spinraza was an injection every four months and it lasted three in me. And so to that end, Evrisdi is a daily medication that I take orally every day. Uh, and so I, I don't have any downside. And I like the fact that it works throughout my body. Uh, you know, the livers, kidneys, and everything else is being exposed to this medicine in some form or other. And for me, there, there, there hasn't been a downside to that. No, no adverse effects, no, no downside, no, uh, you know, nothing uh, from a perspective of, gee, I don't want to do this anymore. So it's worked well for me.